So this is like another special. This is just a conversation. It's not going to be long. Maybe like 15, 20 minutes. But I got some things on my mind. Tuesday thoughts. Well, happy Tuesday evening to you all. I hope all is well. And this conversation is an ongoing one. Because they've been making noise in the news. And it's really annoying. Like, seriously annoying. So... Well, my comment failed, but it's okay. Hey, Joseph. But let's just do this. So today, the Biden and Harris administration announced two cabinet picks, two more new cabinet picks. I mean, there's a lot of positions that need to be filled, obviously. One is um, Transportation Secretary, which is former mayor of South Bend and former presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg. He's been nominated. I mean, I would never thought he would be transportation. But then again, he does have like a good infrastructure like background from what I'm hearing. And also Jennifer Granholm, who is the former governor of Michigan from, I think, 2001 to 2009. And she's also been a um, CNN political commentator, a senior political commentator. And she will be in the Biden and Harris administration, which she's a longtime ally. So those are the two newest cabinet picks. There's going to be more. Um, hey, Dominique, and um, Marsha Fudge, y'all know about Marsha Fudge, is the HUD secretary. You know, um, General Lloyd Austin will be the secretary of defense. And then you have, there's a quite uh, a qualified people. Like, I'm so glad that there's qualified people in this administration. Like, I don't feel like I'm stuck on stupid because I feel like I was stuck on dumb. And I know I'm not dumb. Not just I'm educated, but I know I'm not dumb. And I know folks who know basic arithmetic, they're not dumb. Hello, how are you, cousin? But, yeah. So, the reason why I'm doing this video because these white leftists, they work my damn nerve. And it's, you know what's so funny? It's 90% of them. It's not even a full 100. It's the 90% of the 100. It's like the 10%. They try hard, you know, just to see what happens in this administration and see how the first 100 days will look like. It will look a lot better than these past four years. But um, let me just read some of these tweets because I just can't. One is Rick Perlstein. I actually wrote his tweet down because he criticized this. All this criticism has um gone into Pete Buttigieg. Well, let me read one of the comments. Yes, me too. I feel the people they have on the cabinet is going to help. Yeah, because this country is so broken. What has been done in four years needs to take 12 years to actually restore. But I am going to read some of these white leftist um, tweets. The Bernie wing of the party. The fake Bernie wing of the party. Because I don't feel, I feel like when you're a progressive, you won't say shit like this. So here we are. Rick Perlstein. I don't know what he does. He doesn't have a bio. I can care less. But he said this. I actually wrote his tweet down, as I said earlier. How is the mayor of South Bend qualified to be transportation secretary? Have you paid attention during the um, primaries? But then again, you was on Bernie's woo if you know what I mean. Like he was the greatest thing since cream cheese. But who am I? Right? Who am I? Who am I to say this? It's another one you have. It's a couple of them. Jacobin. Jacobin is a paper that... um. It's a progressive Bernie-like paper, which they don't report real facts. So I'm going to read this. Pete Buttigieg is the poster child for a progressive ne neoliberal. Let's start that over. <clears throat> Almost burped. Jacobin, like I said, is a Bernie. Well, Jacobin is a, Ber is a Bernie affiliated paper. Jacobin said this today. 
Pete Buttigieg is the poster child for progressive neoliberalism, neoliberalism, quote unquote. Offering up platitudes about diversity while leaving untouched the very structures that oppress people. It's time we left this kind of politics in the past. So I'm going to read this again. This is white liberals. Well, white leftists. That's what they call us. The progressives. Like, progressive is not a democratic platform, but whatever. Pete Buttigieg is the poster child of progressive neoliberalism. Progressive neoliberalism, quote unquote. Offering up platitudes about diversity while leaving untouched the very structures that oppress people. It's time we left this kind of politics in the past. Jacobin, you was up Bernie's ass who don't even have a progressive legislative record. Who only out of 422 bills, seven of them became law. And none of them mirrors what he campaigned for. I got time. Another one. Walker Brackman. Trust fund baby cartoonist. The one that praises white supremacists as, you know, they're just poor white men who do this kind of shit for no reason because they're poor. Yeah, Walker Bragman, that one. I don't know what's a bigger insult to young people. He didn't say insult to black people because, you know, these kind of folks, they don't really like black people. Biden not naming any progressive is president-elect Joe Biden. To his cabinet or Biden reportedly given Pete Buttigieg an important ambassadorship. It's not an ambassadorship. It's called the secondary of transportation. But you want to know Walker because you don't have any experience in politics. You're a cartoonist. A trust fund baby. From Long Island. Let's see. See there's some other ones. So this Jonathan guy. So in five years, Pete Buttigieg, at Pete Buttigieg, out of the closet into the cabinet. From Pete who? To secondary Buttigieg, a rising star in the Democrat Party with a rare talent for building between progressives, bridges between progressive and moderates. I guess that's supposed to be a nice tweet. I don't know. Just the progressives just keep trolling. Because I know there's more. Let's see what um, Brianna Gray Joy said. Brianna Joy Gray, excuse me, said. Because I'm... I, I I want to know. Cause she's always she became a troll. She said I guess she um tried to troll Joe Biden. Notice he didn't say he's qualified. I guess that's a slander to Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg is qualified. Man is smart. And the man held political office. And actually got shit done. Unlike your candidate, Brianna. Unlike your candidate. Oh, excuse me, your former boss. But let me just say this about these progressives. It's not going to be long. As I said Friday, you guys praise a man that has been serving in Congress and for 30 years, right? 30 years. He's been serving in Congress for 30 years. And within those 30 years, from the House of Representatives to the Senate, which I think that's the only accomplishment he probably did so far, 422 bills and seven of them become law and none of them are Medicare for all? None. 
Two out of the seven is renaming post offices. One, Thaddeus and Stevens, and I forgot what the other one is. And then the rest of them was, two of them was about vets, and the rest was about the environment, and one about Vermont by Centennial Day. It wasn't about the shit that he was advocating for during the campaign. If Bernie Sanders cared about these issues, all of these issues, like criminal justice, all these issues, a lot of his bills would have became law. But the problem is, he wants to disparage the Democrats, which he was once a Democrat, calling them corporate Democrats and corporate establishment, but yet Bernie Sanders is the establishment. He's the embodiment of the establishment. You're 30 years in and you're not the establishment. You're the outsider. That's bullshit. And for your supporters to keep touting this shit, oh, he's just an outsider. No, he served in the House of Representatives and then graduated to the Senate. He's been in the Senate for almost 15 years. He has not been effective. And out of those seven bills, I think two or three of them, he passed during his tenure in the Senate. So what the fuck have you done? Y'all want to talk shit about people like Amy Klobuchar and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And Kamala Harris has the least time in the Senate more than all these people. And Kamala was more effective in the Senate than Bernie Sanders within his 15-year tenure in the Senate. And then you have these newly elected progressives and some of these incumbents who won their re-election. And it's no shade to them. But y'all protesting the wrong fucking people. This administration will actually listen to y'all dumbasses. Believe it or not. What they're not going to listen to is demands when you guys, the same ones that's protesting Biden be brave. When you guys even campaign for him and y'all talk shit on y'all podcasts and tweet about this shit and y'all think y'all was going to get some type of leverage over black people that turned out overwhelmingly 80% black men, 91, a whopping 91% of black women. Are y'all kidding me? Are y'all that dumb? Are y'all stuck on stupid? Which one is it? Because I don't know. But, um, yeah, progressives, more so white leftists, you're not getting your way. You're not getting shit before black people. If anybody that got leverage in this election and leverage in this administration is black people. We have a say on who will serve us. And I'm glad the CBC and the NAACP and all these civil rights organizations are stepping up. I would rather see them step up any day than some of these fake ass progressive activist groups, whatever they want to fucking call themselves. So a note to the white progressive left or the progressive left, whatever y'all want to call yourselves. You don't have a say in the Biden and Harris administration and you do not have the right to demand who serves in the Biden and Harris administration? You don't have the right to give a list of people, which is not even a diverse collective. It's only like two or three black people on that list and one um, indigenous person. It's mostly white people in there. That's not progressive. It's not a step towards progressivism. So I would like for y'all to shut up, work on staffing your progress, congressional, um, almost messed up the word, congressional folks, aides, excuse me, that will serve y'all and do your job. And don't worry about president-elect Biden and vice president-elect Harris because they know what they're doing. We got the two most qualified people to serve as president and vice president. We don't need these progressives input. We don't need that commentary. 
We don't we don't need their suggestions. We don't need their suggestions how to win. Cause two of them did not even win their re-elections by large numbers like they did in previous years. And you know which ones I'm talking about. We do not need it. And as for trust fund baby Walker Bragman with that weak ass tweet, could shove that shit down the toilet. Because we don't need it. And for the last conciliant time, Bernie Sanders lost the primaries twice. And this year, he lost miserably. He lost more support this year than in 2016. And the only reason why he gained more support in 2016 was because of misogyny and because of racism. Let's keep it real. Let's keep that a buck. It wasn't like, I love his ideas, even though I thought it was good. But his supporters and his surrogates, oh, especially his surrogates, they suck. They really do. And they were very nasty to Secretary Clinton. They really were. And I don't forget that. And also, I don't forget some of them being nasty to the CBC. And some other black elected officials. I don't forget that. Not one bit. So you can keep your um, your list of progressive dream cabinet to yourselves. Or for another progressive um, presidential candidate. Which I don't know how that's going to end up turning out. Because as long as Joe Biden and Kamala Harris do good within these four years. There's not going to be no one that's able going to challenge what they have accomplished. It's just facts. It's truth. But I'm surprised the progressives didn't even get to Jennifer Graham Graham or I keep messing up her name. Because she was the actual governor of Michigan. Political commentator. Well-known political commentator on CNN. But they will try something. Because they're, they're, they're just as bad as... Um, extremists on the right just as bad but kudos to joe biden's picks today there's going to be more picks down the line hopefully we get some one that's melon that looks like me or darker an afro latino too would be nice but um this administration not looking that bad at all so stay tuned for more picks and until then you guys have a good night Take care.